Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege of representing this county. We pray, Lord, we might seek your guidance in all that we do, Lord, that will be in the best for the citizens of this county. Lord, we thank you for looking over us and caring for us. We pray for those in our county that are bereaved, lost loved ones that are sick. Lord, that they care for those that care for them. We pray that you might bless them, give them comfort, Lord. Go this day, and we pray that all decisions we make today might be in keeping with our will. Thank you once again for this privilege of representing this county. We pray these things in our son's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You look like a jack in a box in this. You don't have that on camera, do you? Didn't warn them. Call me to order. I need a motion to approve the meeting. All in favor? Aye. Okay. First of all, I want to thank Mary and Jim for allowing us to do your work. We went back and looked at uh, Maycock was 48 years old. I didn't have a clue we'd been around since 1967. And I just wanted to update you on some of the changes that we've had. Uh, Joy Icing has been with us for 47 years. She recently retired. Uh, Korean Bostic is now responsible for putting together the board minutes and the meetings and everything on that there. Uh, Kenneth Rooks, who's been with us for over 30 something years, he recently retired on December 1st. And Marilyn Smith, who, who worked in Kenneth's department for a long time, she took his place. Uh, James Coleman, who was over the aging program for a long time, uh, back about nine months ago, he retired. Jeff Thompson, over here, he took his place. As you know, we've got five senior centers in Marion County. Uh, Nathan is responsible, Willingham is responsible for our transportation and planning on you know, the buses that we have here in Marion County. And then Jesse handles our RPO, that's the rural planning part of the transportation. Uh, the board asked me this year to visit every county commission in the Daytona region to report what activities we've done through the county. So today is kind of our report to you, the county commission. This time, I would like Marilyn Smith to kind of brief you on some CDBG projects that are ongoing. And it's time to think about uh, this upcoming year for community development. And you've got a tap in front of you, Marilyn. Yeah, as Keith said, I'm Marilyn, and my team consists of Carol Del Turbidville, which you've probably worked with, uh, Heath King, he's relatively new, but, and Tiffany Boyd. And we all work with the counties and cities uh, as far as any kind of infrastructure projects. Uh, demolition, housing, whatever you look, want to look at, that's what we'll look at. Um, right now in Marion County, of course, we've got the disaster projects going on, uh, roads, water, and the multifamily housing, and um, the demolition project is over. And the competitive water project is about to be completed, which means that we, Marion County, will be able to apply for another project as long as we have all of that closed out in by March 31st, which uh, Carol Joe is working on the setting up the public hearing and everything to get that done. Um, and as Keith said, I think uh, we've been looking at a project in Marion County for this session of CDBG on Highway 19, and that's just a uh, cost estimate and a little narrative about what that one is. Of course, doesn't mean it's the one that we have to do. We want you to tell us what you want to do, and we look at the numbers and everything to see how we can get it done. <coughs> and basically, that's, uh, the biggest thing is competitive. We can usually apply for up to three hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, community enhancement is two hundred and fifty thousand. We have not had a public hearing set yet from the state. They have not told us when they will have that. And that's usually when they tell us the amounts that are available and when the applications are due. Usually they're due about June or July. We had a different time period the last year or so because of disasters, but we're hoping it may come back to June that we can submit these applications for you. 
And as I said, we will be willing to come out and write <coughs> this project that you need. Uh, contact information for all of us is in that book he gave you for our department. And if any questions, I'll try to answer. Marion County has opportunities to compete in the county competition. Mm -hmm. You compete against other non-entitlement uh, counties. You know, you don't have Jefferson County to compete against. You, you know, from there, you have county, and also you have the community enhancement okay. categories on that. Um, one of the things, appreciate having the opportunity. I think we worked really well with you, um, Chairman Davis, on the disaster monies and trying to work out Adapt and Mike Shaw. We've been enjoyed really working with Mike and, and working with Jim Byer and, and getting projects, you know, hopefully to, to help alleviate some of the damage from the storm. So you, you have those two categories that you can apply. And they're all very competitive, of course, because everyone in the state is sending in applications. But we work nights, weekends, whenever you need us, we will be there to get it done. The other option that the county has, say a industry locates out in an unincorporated area somewhere like on the interstate somewhere, you have an opportunity to apply for the economic development fund also. And that's 80-20 money. You have that opportunity to apply. And that's that, any time, I'm sorry, excuse me. That could be a water, a sewer, it could be roads, you know, any type of industry. It could be a commercial industry. It could be a truck stop, you know. I know that I know y'all worked real hard trying to to look at the, a major truck stop like like the one that went up in Tuscumbia. You know that loves yeah. they employed a lot of people. That's an eligible activity for that. And those are 80 20. They take those applications all year. Uh, the other fourth option that the county has is the Appalachian Regional Commission funds. Uh, you're eligible to apply in August to be chair. Yeah. And right now that's at a 70 30. So you, so you virtually have four types of options on those type of funds, on grant funds for that. And I guess the key thing is, you know, just let us know what you may be looking at. Give us a call and we'll search every grant fund that's out there to see what we can get from here you can. As members of NACOG, we will do any application that you ask us to submit. We will do that. No cost. Uh, now I would like to call Jesse Turner to talk about some road projects and industrial road access. We, we were successful working with Mike and also Town of Bear Creek this past year on some road improvements. Yeah, I'm Jesse Turner. Um, now I'm responsible for the RPO, which is the Rural Planning Organization, which is a, a, a consultation process for with Aldi for, for the, uh, the, the rural counties. And municipalities in the area. Uh, basically, we're, 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 we're your advocate with Aldi uh, with, when it deals with state and federal roads and any functionally classified <coughs> roads. Uh, when I first took this job, one of the first projects I worked on was the, uh, the North Fork Creek Bridge project on 43. Uh, uh, former Mayor Gunning and Mr. Jackson, Mr. Barnwell, Keith, and I all, all went down to Aldi and met, met with Mr. McGinnis. And it wasn't long before we saw that project get moved up. Uh, we we usually have the highway director up uh, every every year or two, and we, we go out and, sh and show him our priorities in this region. And I, I've actually been, been in the car, and they've actually called down the down to the central office and moved projects up as as we're riding around looking at those projects as well. Um, also, any any kind of grant applications that Aldot does, I've, I've I'm always willing to work with you to uh, submit those. Um, right now, the transportation alternative programs are is open. That those are that, that, that the, those are, are are that's a grant that's eligible for s sidewalks and streetscapes. Uh, usually, your uh, municipalities are, are more interested in those, but we we have worked with some counties on those projects. But as Keith mentioned, the industrial access program, any new or expanded industry that comes in. Is uh, is uh, el eligible for these funds? They're 100% funded. Uh, we recently worked with Mike Shaw, Marion County, and also the town of Bear Creek for a, a door components expansion. Uh, it was 650 foot of, of County Road 99, where it intersects with uh, Highway 13. 
it's, it's just going to be widened to help get trucks in and out there. So that, that, that's a county road that's being widened there with these funds. And I say that that's all 100% state funded, so it, it takes no local money for that to happen. Uh, I believe there should be a new packet also with just a list of the road projects that the state has scheduled for this year. It's uh, toward the very back. Any, anytime you have any questions about those or need updates or you know, or, or if we need to push a little, little harder on the state to get those moved up, just call us and we can get to work on that as well. But I appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. One of the things that we just need to hear from, from the commission on periodic basis, a list of those projects, make sure that you tell us what your priorities are. You know, we hear a lot of times from folks in Montgomery about projects that are either going to be delayed or, or slow down for some reason. We just need to keep you informed and, and if you would just tell us what those priority projects are. And, and there are a list of those projects there. And that's is current. One thing that NACOT does have to access, they can go into the system, the ALDOT system, uh, just like an like employee of ALDOT and look at projects. This uh, bridge replacement thing on that way you and Winfield. I believe that was a, one of the ramp projects. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. so, I suppose uh, they never started it yet. That's what I was wondering. Talk yeah. a little bit about a trip and ramp and weird stuff. They did ramp in Green Camp. Yeah, weird. which but, I, I think ramp was $5 million and then y'all you know, mm -hmm. the state threw in the match for you, I believe, if, I, if I'm remembering that correctly. But uh, I say, I think that. Uh, Y'all work with the municipalities and y'all come up with a list of projects to do. But any of those projects that y'all need to update on, uh, I'd be glad to. Oh, 43 over here. What's that? Oh, 43 over here. They're supposed to tear that bridge out. Yeah. When this June 26th attack, bridge replacement with Randy Drive. Yeah, Randy Drive, yeah, it's old 43. Right. I think the, I think the question they're asking on the ramp. The delays. There's so many projects in the system. What the state thought that they would get out is flooded the system. Yeah, it's, you know, they, they had to magnitude a lot of projects and get it through. And then moving Marion County to the Tuscaloosa district. And, and the biggest back. thing on that is just, you know, be sure, because they had sent some letters out wanting updates on some of these projects. We just need to be sure that, that, that we respond to those letters, that, that plans are being processed for those. So we don't need to lose that funding. Well, what will be the general effect uh, since you're about moving Marion County into the, that district? Is that going to affect us in a lot of different ways? Well, the, 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 I, I believe I believe Marion County is going to want it being real good because you because James Brown's still the, the regional engineer yeah. there. So you know we we, we have a great relationship yeah. with James Brown. James Brown. Yeah, James, yeah. James, James Brown will be the regional administrator for this district. Yes. And as we've been told to uh, anticipate you have it in for at least two years. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's what discussion from out on. And the man has got all the answers is standing right here in the back. No, Mr. Brown's been a friend of ours. Mr. Brown has been, been, been a friend of ours for many years. That, yeah. That's great. He's been, 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 been a good friend, good helper. He was very instrumental in, in helping get that Canada 35 done too. I know it's here uh welcome center this is your line eleven and four sixteen. Mm. Yeah, I believe one of that stock like utilities of the construction was. Yeah, I don't know. We don't see where it is. 11 4 16 when they would start construction? I, yeah, that was maybe. either maybe. utilities or construction. I, I'd have to look. I don't see, but that, I didn't know it here. You got Grandview Drive ready to go? They, the city of Hamilton's handling that. The city of Hamilton, I, and I understand they have done some engineering on it. I, I don't know the status of that project, but that's the Hamilton, city of Hamilton project. I'll check in on that. It's a out. it's a it's a ramp funded project, but it's still a city of Hampton. That was one of the projects that the job agreed to, to, for Hampton to do. Jesse, yeah, what is that? It's twenty six or fifteen. What it says here. Oh, that's that. Is that the letting date? Yeah. 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 That's 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 probably pretty accurate then. One of the things that Jesse Commission also needs to know. If, if you have companies expanding by industrial access, you have only limited times during the year that you can apply for right. uh, Usually three times a year is when that board meets. Um, I've been down to the last several that they've had, and they're, they're
they're, they're very willing to help to, to give money out. Um, I've seen very few applications turn down. And usually if they're turned down, they say, you know, fix this and come back to us. What, what's the match on that now, Jesse? It's no match. It's 100%. 100%. You know, that, um, the battery project that we're working on. Right. Okay. Explain that again. <laughs> <laughs> no match. Money? Yeah. Yeah. Don't match. Don't match. Uh, that's kind of money we like. Yeah. No marriage. The sponsor is, is responsible for the, the engineering costs, and that's it. As long as you can, the county right. engineer can do that, you, there's I, You know, that, that, it's a hundred and fifty thousand dollar project in Bear Creek, and I think engineering is going to be ten to fifteen thousand. Yeah. If you're familiar with that project in Bear Creek, that road is, is tore out of pieces. You know, there are some drainage issues, and you know, since the door components about hardened and can bring uh -huh. equipment back in there, they were having trouble being able to get your trucks in and out. You know. And you had that truck shop. Yeah, it, it's a good project. Very, 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 it's a very good project. Um, it, it'll help out those those businesses in that area and help out the, the city and the county as well. One, one of the questions that uh, in Maryland, maybe you can answer, you and Nathan, is about safe rooms. You know how that works. You know, some people have asked me that. You want to answer that? Well, of course, I was during that designation of. Uh, the disaster that a lot of applications went in. All of that money at this point may have already been allocated to the communities, but uh, we'll definitely check with Ashley and see if anything's available for anyone. I know Mr. Barbos, there's a company in your district that asked the city about looking for some site money out there in, in, in Ewan. In Ewan? Yes. And the thing about it, you have to have a disaster and you have to apply to those dollars at that time. At that time. Mm -hmm. And we have been working with the housing authority in Hamilton on some safe uh, rooms. Ragsdale and Weston. Right those there. are completed. We've got those on that. Now I would like uh, Mr. Thompson to talk about some of the aging functions of the agency services provided for Marion County. Thank you, sir. Uh, in the packet, you have a description of some of the programs, and I'll quickly try to go through some of these. We do uh, probably 10 major uh, different program subsets, if you would, uh, within aging. Uh, the first one being ombudsman program. This is where we have an advocate in-house uh, dealing with nursing homes and assisted living facilities. Uh, and this is for all the five counties. In Marion County, we do have three nursing homes and three assisted living facilities. And that's where individuals can call and complain or the residents themselves can call us and complain about if they have a complaint about the facility and we try to mediate those uh, complaints there. Uh, the next one would be Medicaid waiver which would be our largest program uh, within the aging department. Uh, this is set up for seniors or people with disabilities that can still stay in their home with some help uh, rather than going to a nursing home and we contract with a provider they go out and do personal care, homemaker care, that allows individuals to stay in their home. And we have uh, 627 total clients throughout the five counties uh, last year, and 97 of those were in Marion County. Uh, it's a great program, saves uh, Medicaid a ton of money, state a ton of money. Uh, it's a win-win there. Uh, the state health insurance program, we have a counselor in our office that deals with individuals needing information on Medicare, Medicaid, long-term care insurance. You probably heard of the Part D prescription drug program. We helped uh, a little over a thousand people this past open enrollment in about a two-month period. Uh, we helped over a thousand throughout the NACOG region. Uh, we also contract for legal services uh, for seniors and uh, we contract with Jan Neal out of Opelika, uh, that law firm, and uh, she provides services such as wills, um, social security disability, VA benefits, and last year she um, helped 300, a little over 300 clients uh, throughout the NACOG region. Nutrition program, we have 25 senior centers. Um, there's five, as Keith mentioned, in Marion County, and uh, we serve home meals, congregate meals, we do activities, recreation. Um, in Marion County last year, we served 52,000 meals uh, throughout the county. Uh, the Alabama CARES program, and this is a program
program designed for individuals that are taking care of, uh, say, a dementia or Alzheimer's relative in the home, and they need uh, respite care, time that they can go out and just uh, get away for a while. We can put an individual in the home for a few hours and uh, give that person a break, basically. So that's a, that's a great program there. Uh, senior employment program, this is providing part-time employment for low-income seniors. Um, I believe Marion County has seven of those uh, slots here. Um, Hamilton Senior Center, Winfield Elementary, Brilliant Senior Center, and I don't have the rest of those. We do have seven placed in, in Marion County. Um, the last one is the Senior RX program. And this is designed for uh, individuals that are 55 and over and have no drug coverage. Mm -hmm. um, they have a chronic medical condition and, of course, they just can't pay for the medication. We have an individual that works with the pharmaceutical companies and through that uh, are able to get free or low-cost meds uh, for that individual. And there's an income guideline there, but uh, we're able to help a lot of people in that program. That's a lot in a little bit of time. We um, basically do anything that's dealing with senior citizens uh, or people now with disabilities. Uh, we're set up as an uh, aging and disability resource center where individuals can call in. We screen those individuals for whatever services they might need. If we can't provide them, we refer out to the community and, and, and try to meet the service uh, with the with And after a job, when the governor didn't take that Medicaid and Medicare money? <laughs> that's that's uh, remains to be seen. We hope not, but that's a that's a deep subject, and we don't know really, to be honest with you, how it's going to work out. Um, One of the things the commission needs to be aware of is senior aid program. If you have departments that come to the commission looking for clerical, administrative type people. If you have people here in Marion County that qualify for this program, the cost to the county can save the county an extreme amount of money if you're having to pay for a partner for additional. It's a thousand dollars a year. That's that's the match. And that person, 55 years old or older, that meets the income guidelines, works 19 and three quarter hours a week. And you pay the thousand, and then we take care of the rest for you. We pay them. Liability insurance, we pay the workers' comp, we pay everything. Uh, that, that employee works under somebody at the Department of the County, but it saves you an extreme amount of money. So that is a, a good program that the county needs to be aware of as other departments come to the commission asking for help. Is that available for private business as well? No, it is. You have to be either a 501c3 nonprofit or a branch of the government. So you have a lot of departments that come before y'all seeking <coughs> help. So they could help reduce some of the county's expenditures. So that program's there. Thank y'all. Thank you. Uh, our last presenter is Nathan Willingham. And Nathan can talk about some transportation planning and also for our vehicles here in the county. Thank you. And, and thank y'all, Commissioner, for allowing us to do the work we can do for you. Uh, as Keith said, I'm primarily in charge of the agency's planning and public transportation programs. Our public transit system operates about 60 total buses across all five counties. Uh, here in Marion County, we operate twice a week service for dial a ride and a shopping shuttle in Hamilton. That provides about between 20 and 30 rides per week. We also have limited dial a ride service in the Winfield area that's operated through the Park and Recreation Department there. In addition, uh, we are able to provide for meal delivery in Brilliant, Winfield, and Hamilton through our public transportation program. In addition to responsibilities for public transit, I also handle the agent, agency's regional and community planning projects. Um, as you probably have seen, we have multiple contracts uh, in Marion County, in both Winfield and in Hamilton, for planning and zoning and technical assistance to those local municipalities. Uh, in addition to that, we have a regional planning program uh, called Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy. It's a five-year strategic plan for economic development in the region. And the importance of that is that it sets up uh, grant eligibility through the Department of Commerce's Economic Development Administration. 
Uh, EDA provides some very large grants for economic development in the case of large industry attraction. The matching share for EDA right now is 50-50 in Marion County. Uh, however, the 50% that is local share can be provided in part through Appalachian Regional Commission and Community Development Block Grant funding from the state. So there's some very interesting ways that when a large economic development project comes into a community that funding can be blended under these different umbrellas. Uh, the important thing to, to, for what we do, what I do individually, is that uh, there are red taping requirements for all these programs and one of those is that we maintain a consistent SIDS for this development strategy, which includes outreach and understanding of what the local priorities are. Uh, in addition to that, uh, an important economic development function that we serve is as administrator for the Region 1 Workforce Development Council. The Region 1 Workforce Council is one of 10 workforce councils across the state that is responsible for reviewing applications for workforce development funding for the Department for Post-Secondary Education. For that's Bell State University, or Bell State Community College here in Hamilton. Uh, and in the past year, um, we've seen about $400,000 worth of grants for health care, education, um, health care simulators, and for machine tool technology. And as, as everyone's aware, um, providing workforce for business and industry and manufacturing is critical. And then, of course, providing a workforce that can support the rural health care system is also critical, not just for quality of life and public health and safety, but also for larger scale economic development activities. And then finally, um, as has been mentioned before, uh, we have a, a strong role to play in the planning process for FEMA's Hazard Mitigation Grant Program. Uh, HMGP is a set-aside program that takes a portion of the funding that comes into the state following a disaster declaration and sets that money aside for mitigation projects. Those are things like sirens and storm shelters. Uh, the Regional Hazard Mitigation Plan, which I believe you all adopted very recently, establishes the eligibility of local governments, including county commissions, to apply for those funds when they become available following the disaster declaration. Thank you. Do I understand everything you just said? <laughs> All works out. Don't, uh, yeah. We all got that. Have this thing. Some place. Yes, sir. We uh, had a contract to do uh, update plan for Hobart, Franklin, Marion, and Winston County. And that has been updated. They can handle that, working with your EMA director mm -hmm. to get that. So now, in the event of a disaster, the county is eligible for assistance. And that was the big thing. Uh, summarizing, we appreciate the opportunity to work with Marion County. And uh, I know it's, I know uh, we're not perfect. You know, I know sometimes we make mistakes and, and, and that, but we enjoy working with you. We want to continue working with you. Uh, and uh, our next board meeting is January 29th at 1130. I know David Thornell's got a program that starts at 830 today. So we back towers up there. Uh, Mr. Davis is chairman of the commission. Uh, he has a seat on the NACOG board. The NACOG board has, has 37 elected officials has 20 appointed officials. You appoint three each year to, to be on the NACOG board. So y'all have a vote on the operation of how the NACOG works. So I, I know Mr. Marmel, he took an active role and came to a lot of meetings. I hope that uh, someone from the commission does continue to come to the meeting. You have an opportunity if the, if the chairman is unable that the commission, by a proxy vote, can establish another one of the commissioners to attend the meeting and we'll have the voting rights of that. Um, I feel the last year, working with Mr. Shaw, we accomplished quite a bit. I think the disaster funds was something that, mm -hmm. that took everybody. I know when you say, Mike, you know, it took a cooperative effort. No it took a cooperative effort. I know that didn't cover the whole county. It only covered four <coughs> county. But like I said, we would we'd like to work with you, continue working with you. Uh, Y'all are members. Uh, any application that you want us to submit, we do submit it at no cost to the commission. Our budget last year was a little over $10 million. Uh, our due structure is about $83,000. Uh, when projects are funded, there is administrative dollars, and that's pretty much what keeps us operating. Mr. Thompson, the aging function of the agency takes about 66% of our budget. 
Thank you. So that's what we're here today. So on the 29th, uh, that meeting at 11.30 is, we have six board meetings a year, and this January meeting is the one totally for the state legislators. I've heard from Mr. Bussman, he's not going to be able to come that day, but I have heard from Senator uh, Melson, and I have heard from Senator Stubbs, they're going to both be there. So you would have an opportunity to talk to both of them if you went to 10 We would like to hear from you as a commission if you have priorities or goals or, or, or projects or legislation that needs to be changed to, to benefit the county better. Say. I know Cobbett County has mentioned to me uh, their concern with the rock excise tax. You know that the rock has been taken over to Mississippi and it's tearing up county roads in Cobbett County and it's not getting their full benefit. Sure, you may have the, the same problem here in Marion County. I'm sure we do. On that, and they they want to talk to Senator Stutz about looking at ways to either strengthen that or get the county for more money to go back to the commission and the road department for that. So those are some activities. We got a lot of problems. We need. To. Yeah. Uh, we have a situation where some of our funds were taken away from us. Yeah. Uh, several oh. stacks. Well, that's now is the time to sit down and talk to the folks before you know the legislative session starts on March the fourth, and there uh, you also got Senator Melson that I went to high school with. He just took Tammy Irons' place, and he works uh, real close with Senator Reed. So, so you've got Mr. Reed, and you got Mr. Busman, and you got Senator Stubbs on that. <coughs> Also, I asked the board if they want to go for a Washington trip. I asked them, and they said for me to set that up, and that's going to be on the 24th of March through the 26th. And that's scheduled uh, with, with Mr. Shelby at dinner that night, and also a uh, lunch with that on that. So. Isn't Reed going to be sort of important for this area? He's Jasper, but he's also like the uh, majority leader? Or he, he is the rich. The Republican majority leader in the Senate. Yeah. So we thank you for the time. Thank you. So it seems like we a lot of we've got you say we've been a lot of activities. Most of these activities were caused by emergencies, yes. by storms. Right. Uh, I'd like to see some activities for improvement, not for back bringing it back to where it was. Uh, I know our we don't we don't have very little very little money to spend on roads that are not federally or federally approved roads. We got some roads that we build that we get nothing, no way to maintain these roads. What, what is that uh, Colbert County going to do with that? The, you're talking about the uh, service uh, tax, rock service tax, mm -hmm. and they're going to try to up the thing? They're trying to up because a lot of that big bulking facility there in the western part of Collin County He's going with the majority of it's going over to Mississippi with the rock. I understood it. Farmer told me up there at Franklin County got that took away from them. Well, you know, they got their TVA tax and split it amongst Cobb County and all up in there. We quit we, getting it. Or well, we get very little. I guess right now is the, the time to approach these folks that they're bringing you. And we do represent you and we do. Well, that's represent. what I say. I mean, was you know, I just need to, a, I just need to hear from you, yeah. and you know you have an opportunity to voice because I'm in Montgomery quite often, same way your county engineer is, and that, and I just need to know what your priorities and goals and needs are. You know. Like I said, Mr. Bob, we're not perfect, but but I'm here to to try to do better. Yes, sir. I just got a couple things real quick. Um, when we conducted our interviews on our position in the engineer's office, 
I'd recommend you employ a little anesthetist subject to the probationary period and start a salary of twelve fifty per hour. I'll get one. I'll second. All in favor? Okay. Okay. The only other thing I got is we got our Alabama Vegetation Management Conference coming up first of next month. And we have to keep our points current in order to keep our herbicide program going. And Richard and I are only more than two licensed after certified applicators is recommending that y'all approve us attending that conference. Second motion. Okay. All in favor? Yeah. Tom, you did? Wait a minute. Your courthouse flooded <laughs> last night. Dad, you're not going to talk about that? I, you know, Rucker probably speaks about it more than I can. You know, I know that uh, there was a, a, a fitting or a, a tap that had blown off in, in the men's restroom. And it went, well, I understand that's what caused the problem. You had a big surf pro. Yeah, a big deal. A yeah. surf, surf pro, you yeah. know, came. In, in it was a big deal last night. <laughs> I'm there. When it's a big deal, when it comes to that flood, it starts at the bottom coming up. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big deal. Was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a water line? It, it, was, a, it was in the, I guess the men's restroom, it was where a line had been capped off. Yeah. And it, and it blew that out. Blew and that out. Daniel had said that it was, there was a pretty good stream of water, and mm -hmm. of course it took a while to kind of get it stopped, and then of course I, I kind of came in late, and Sir Pro was, you know, they, it looks like they had done a good job mm -hmm. trying to get their water removed. Did, how, how long did it take for the water to be removed? You know, I, I don't know. I left about 7 or... They finished up at midnight. Midnight? Okay. Midnight. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I knew I left about 7, 7.30. You know. okay. But no no major damage to the courthouse is what I'm getting at? Not that I'm aware of. I, did you... There's no major damage right now. The carpet and some of the areas are still wet. We're trying to remove humidity with the surgical equipment. Uh -huh. um, it should take at least a day, two days to remove all of the humidity. Um, Mr. Knight's working very, very hard to try to do that with his equipment. And then the commission just needs to look at some of the areas as well as their insurance department to decide what we're going to do about the carpet. Right, but that, but just aside from some carpets, and nothing really. Then going to a lot of the offices, most of the hallways was. It was mainly in the hallways. It started in the center part of the courthouse in the handicapped restroom. Um, at one time we had about three to four inches on the floor. It settled through the center hallway a little bit and back to the probate judge, mainly in the board of registers office. Mm -hmm. It just kind of went to the lowest place. Okay. But there was three or four. Keith was saying maybe less than that. But that it, you, there were about three or four inches in some places. There were three or four inches. I have these shoes. They have a three inch heel, and there were places where the wire was over my shoes. Okay. Okay. All in one and one shoe looks just very galoshes. Well, by the time I got there, it was. Plus, it was very dry to me this morning when I was over there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the surfer has done a good job on it. They, they got it all okay. Yeah. Is, uh, is the courthouse open today? Yes. Okay. Okay. Open or open? Yeah. Okay. I need a... Motion to submit. All the facts are all the facts.